A list of items to do is a requirement for any personal knowledge management system. There are physical methods like bullet journaling, journals by Frank and Covey, and even the trusty back of an envelope. The list of software solutions is endless, from the simple to-do list added to products like Microsoft Outlook, all the way to dedicated comprehensive applications like Todoist. The to-do list is a preeminent need to satisfy for anyone looking for enhanced productivity. In this episode, I'm going to teach you how I use the to-do list inside the Brain software. In this episode, prereqs are only that you have the Brain version 12 or greater. The version I'm recording with is version 13. As I am always on a quest to reduce the complexity of my PKM, of course, I wanted to be able to capture a list of to-dos in the Brain software, as this is the core of my PKM. So when the Brain software version 12 introduced to-do list, I decided it was time to spend a few months to figure out if I could collapse one more feature into a single application of my PKM. If you've consumed any of my media before, you know that I'm a big fan of a few thought types. Specifically, I use a thought type for person, projects, and knowledge acquisition. I will focus on one child thought type of knowledge acquisition in this video, that is meaty notes. You can use the same principles in any knowledge acquisition child thought type. I will also touch on the use of to-dos in person and project thought types as well. As I create more meaty notes in my PKM than any other thought type, I have iterated through this type and template that I use more than any other. At one point, I was iterating the template for meeting notes more than once an hour as I tested it in meeting after meeting. With this level of refinement, I am most confident in this one's use. That is not to say I'm done refining, just that refinement rate has decreased to the point where I feel there is enough value to share with my audience. First, I use my template system to include two default to-dos. By having them in my template, I never have to think about what to put in a meeting note. Those default to-dos are to create a summary for the meeting, and of course, to indicate a next action if one is available. I like these as they ensure that I have a reason to go back to each meeting note, review it again, and look for missing to-dos and document them. It also means I look at many meeting notes a second time and progressively summarize them. I should also mention that I segment my meeting notes into five sections. Date, attendees, summary and action items, goal, and notes. During a meeting, I might add to-dos in the notes section but during my review and progressive summarization sessions, I move them into the action items section. I might also clean up my notes at the same time. Though I try to do this as part of my closing of my daily notes, I often catch up with my me notes during my end of week or end of month reviews. My project thought types are rather extensive, but I want to focus on seven of them. Daily reviews, weekly reviews, monthly reviews, quarterly reviews, and yearly reviews. Really, these seven break down into project thoughts and review thoughts. I use a lot of project principles from the book Getting Things Done, GTD by David Allen, and will assume that the listener has some familiarity. If you've not looked into GTD, I recommend you read or listen to the book. I treat my personal and business projects the same way. Having unique thought types for each is more of a sorting method. This means that in a project thought, I use my project template based upon GTD's natural planning model for either project type. The template has a next action as its first section. Not because I want to create next actions first, but because I will be using that section most frequently for the life of the project. Instead, I start with the what, why, and how before I do next actions as they inform what next action should be. If you don't want to dig into these details, you can skip forward into the review notes section. But in this case, I'm going to go through an example. I'll go through the process of making this article. The project template has a lot of tips and hints that you can delete if you want. It does make it much easier and much cleaner, but I try to read them before and ensure that I'm honoring the GDD principles and not getting lazy. What, also known as outcome visioning. What did I envision when I first set out to create this article? I wanted to create media that would help those using the Brain software and those who might be interested in using the Brain software on some techniques that they might use with the to-do list feature now in the Brain software. Areas to look at for this media includes the types of thoughts I recommend using to-dos in, examples of that, a review of the to-do list functionality, and advice on what to do when you realize you have too many to-dos.
The next section is why, or the purpose and principles. My purpose for making the media is always twofold. One, it forces me to evaluate and document my own methods, causing refinement along the way. Number two, to create a larger ecosystem of the brain users communicating and sharing ideas and methods. For principles, I've given myself, this must be done before 2022, week 47, to keep with my commitment to release media once per week. Second, the media must be released on Medium and YouTube with links posted on Reddit, Twitter, and the Aesthetics Discord server. Next, we have how. You'll notice that how already has the action items of brainstorm and analyze. These are two separate actions. This mainly reminds me to keep the proverbial cart before the horse. Take it a minute to brainstorm a few ideas before jumping into that analyze stage and throwing them out. Sometimes I will try to come up with wild ideas, but for media releases, it really has become rather rote. Create an article outline in Ulysses, complete the article section copy, add images, record video, review the article in Ulysses and modify based on the recording, and then finally publish to Medium and YouTube. Don't forget to check off the brainstorm and analyze the do's once completed. Finally, now that we know our what, why, and how, we can create our next actions for the projects. This could be made by using the dash and adding a space after it. Do this for each line item you want to add as a to-do. Or you can select the lines that you want and simply click on the to do button in the toolbar. And now they've all become to do's. I will often create a list of items to do, but only set the next two or three as to do's, leaving the rest of them as bullet points. Later in the video, we'll talk about what to do if I now have too many items in my to do list, how do I solve it? In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and put these all back. Though this is a technique I've seen others use, it's not my favorite. One last thing I wanna tell you is that if you are creating a list, rather than using the dash and a space in order to create an empty to-do item, you can create something already done by using the plus sign and a space in order to create that. Now, of course, I have completed my article selection copy. I've added in images to the Medium article and I'm in the process of recording my video. Of course, by the time I've finished all of this, I will have all of the, all six of these to-dos done. Let's move over to the review thoughts. Only a few months ago, I was introduced to the concept of a daily note. At first, I was not a fan. It was part journal, part GTD, part something else I just couldn't understand. So I played with it, watched a few more videos on people using daily notes, then finally it clicked. I was already a fan of weekly, monthly, quarterly, and yearly reviews. Why not augment that with a daily review in the brain software? This was even more impactful for me as I was doing weekly, monthly, quarterly, and annual reviews in Todoist, but was not storing the results anywhere. It was just a checklist, so I had no way to see what I had learned. That's when I created a massive set of thought infrastructure, adding a thought for the current year, quarter, month, week, and even the current day. As you can see here, I've gone so far as to pin the current instances into the brain. By having my reviews in the brain, I could look back at all of the daily reviews to help to build up wins and other knowledge for my weekly review. Okay, and that of course would fold up into my monthly review, into my quarterly review, and then finally into my annual review. Let's jump back here to the daily review. I now often sit on the couch in the evenings typing up summaries and filling in my daily notes. It is both therapeutic and keeps me better prepared for the tasks that I don't want to slip away. Note, I did not put the entire year in all at once. That's too much work, and the brain does not have a good automation process. Instead, I create the following week at the end of each week's review. I will often create all the days for the next week simultaneously to be a bit more efficient. However, I do not add each day's template until that day arrives. This shows the days that I was overwhelmed and did not document anything. Also, it does not overwhelm my to-do list with a bunch of items that are not yet relevant. Person notes. Okay, let's jump over to, our, to people here. I'm gonna use Mr. Feynman. There are only two times I add to-dos to a thought type of person. One, for research prompts, and two, when I owe someone something outside of a project. 
As all of my meeting, project, and review thoughts have to do's related to 99% of my daily activities, that does not leave many things that I need to add to a person note. By keeping all but the rare to do out of a person thought type, I have simplified what I need to review in any given week. The exceptions I just spoke about are just that, exceptions. I rarely owe someone something out of a project, but if there's really no other good place to record that deliverable, their person thought is just what has to do. The research prompt is more common, as I keep a monolithic repository, meaning that I do not have a separate repository for writing a book, learning a new subject in school, or anything else. Thus, I mix daily meeting notes in the same brain repository as reviews on books, breakdowns of scientific theories, and everything else. Reading a book on the life of Richard Feynman might cause me to want to see if I can find out more about his ability to lockpick and safe crack. It's not really enough to create a project around, so I just add a to-do to look the information up. All right, let's move to something a little more functional. Let's actually open the to-do pane. It's not really hard. We simply have to go up next to the search bar and open the right panel. Now in the right panel, there are two tabs, one for report and one for to-do list. Okay, if you find yourself in a report like this, just click over to the to-do list and, and it should show you any of the to-dos you currently have. Now first, a lot of people love the fact that there are filters here and we can filter by thought types as well as thought tags. It's something you should know about, but that being said, I rarely filter my to-do lists as I kind of want to see everything at once. Now what I do a lot though is interact with the to-do list itself. If something like my weekly review is cluttering things up, I can click the little down arrow next to it, collapse the whole thing. Maybe because I've completed my habits for the day, I just want to collapse that portion so I can collapse a portion of a note. If I want to modify an existing to-do item, I can just go ahead and type directly on it in the to-do pane. To jump to a thought, such as my daily note, I can just click on the title and it will bring me over to that thought. This video would not be complete if I did not warn you that it's very easy to quickly become overwhelmed by the number of to-dos you might create. Within a month of using to-dos, I had over 300 and realized I would never actually achieve anything. As the saying goes, if everything is important, nothing is important. To combat, there's a couple of techniques I've learned about. The first one is what I showed you earlier. If you're working inside of a project, you can choose to have some of those items not be to-dos, but basically because you can't get to them yet, just leave them as bullet points. Again, this one doesn't fit my style very well, so I still leave everything as to-dos. Instead of only showing the most actionable to-dos, I have next actions on a weekly, monthly, and quarterly basis to purge with increased brutality. This forces me to become familiar with the outstanding tasks better prioritize or abandon the products they are associated with. However, by having this as part of my weekly review, I do not attempt to review all of my to-dos every week, not yet at least. I try to make it so that I examine every to-do every month, often deciding to do nothing with that associated thought, leaving time for my subconscious to determine what I should do about that task list for a personal research project that I added to the brain four years ago. By the time I get to a quarterly review, I'm more likely to call a project abandoned and convert all the to-dos to bullet points to save them if I want to resurrect the project later. As I said, as time goes on, I try to get more brutal and strict with the gardening of my brain. My weekly wander task is part of the process. By the end of a month, my goal is always to have fewer to-dos than when I started. Thank you for joining me this week. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. I'll be trying to put out a video every week to help continue to build knowledge about the brain software productivity, and other PKM processes.